Welcome back to the VDJ80 build. Um, we're up to day five, uh, so week three of our seven week build. So hopefully we get it all done. In today's episode, I'm gonna be chopping off the existing engine mounts and welding on some, uh, some new ones and just getting, I guess, the engine and the gearbox fitted up. And then we're also gonna head up to Off Track Concepts uh, up in Cobram. Uh, who does all the, the conversion kits for these and we're going to have a look around their workshop and um, and yeah pick up some conversion bits so um, let's get into it first things first though we've got a bit of work to do so I've got to chop off all the existing engine mounts I've got to move brake lines and because I've got to redo all these brake lines and everything like that but basically I've got to cut off the existing engine mounts I've also got to cut off on the passenger side there's a brace here for the strut tower uh, just to get a bit of clearance and then I've actually got um, new pieces to weld in there to bring that um, to bring that back but yeah it's just gonna be a whole lot of whole lot of cutting um, and cleaning up and then what the plan will be is I'll then mount up the gearbox uh, and then, so I'm using the, the gearbox from the 79 series and then we'll basically, I bolt the engine mounts to the engine, drop it in and then where it sits nicely, tack it up and then I can finish welding it off and that. So I'll talk through it as I'm going through, but I just sort of want to give you an intro to what's going to happen today. Things are going to move sort of fairly quickly today. That's the plan, so we might as well crack in. So let's have a bit of a look at these engine mounts. So these are a cool piece of kit. Um, yeah, there obviously that goes onto the, the block. And then that's using like the existing sort of flat bit that goes on the chassis. And then this is a, um, a bush. It's actually out of a, uh, an upper control arm. So yeah, chops them off, welds on the bracket, and then we can use a bush um, just a factory bush for that. And yeah, that gives you the, the thing. So I think that's a pretty, pretty cool piece of kit. All right. All right, so we're neck deep in the VDJ 80 build now. Engine's already out, cab's off, and I'm actually up in Cobram today at Off Track Concepts. Now, if you remember in the first episode, I mentioned that there was a guy who's done a lot of these VDJ swaps into 80 series. Well, this is the man, so meet, meet Hagen. Um, he's the, the owner of Off Track Comsex. G'day, Hagen. Hi, everyone. How's it going? So tell us a little bit, you know, we've got one of your examples here in front of us. This is, uh, this is Jason's 80, uh, which has actually just been recently featured in, in 4x4 Australia. So yeah, tell us a little bit about, you know, why did you start doing the VDJ swaps in the, in the 80 series and, and in your 105 series? I guess, yeah. Well, it all started with my 105. I was either going to do an FTE conversion, which everybody's done, or a 1VD. I'd seen one that was done before, which I thought was pretty cool. I was bidding on both at the auctions as a donor vehicle, and I thought, whichever one I win first, I'll do that. And so it was just dumb yeah, luck, really. Dumb luck. <laughs> ended up with a 79, so yeah. yeah. And then, you know, tell us a little bit about you know, what's involved. Like, obviously, I, I'm learning a lot. I thought it'd be just a set of engine mounts and we're done sort of thing. But um, there's a lot of little idiosyncrasies in, in it, isn't there? And, and I mean, how did you go about sort of working that out? A lot of ways to do it, but to do it well, to have no body lift, you've got to get pretty involved with it. Notching chassis rails, clearancing everything, and then it's not just mounting the engine either, like fuel lines have got to be changed, power steering, everything, air con lines, wiring's a huge part of it. Even just the little things like the, the oil pressure sensor. Yeah. Yeah, like, so that's, that usually sits at the bottom of the, at the front of the engine, but, you know, facing down. Whereas, you know, with this, it then hit, you know, one of the cross members sort of thing, so. Yeah, and that's 
79 series alone and then you start getting to the 200 stuff and it's a whole different ball game. Another ball game. Yeah. yeah. Which, and I mean, you've got a very well set up shop here now though. So um, yeah, tell us a little bit about you know, off-track concepts and, and what you're doing. Obviously you don't just do VDJ swaps or kits for them. Yeah, I sort of everything four wheel drive fabrication related. Yeah, draw systems, battery setups, yeah. Engine conversions, full car builds. And you're gonna be starting to make kits for the VD swaps, aren't you? Yeah, so we've developed most of the parts now. Pretty well got everything drawn, sort of nearly on the shelf. Yeah. And yeah, people are starting to get interested in them. Well, yeah, they've been asked for them for a long time and might start to release them to everybody. And you'll see me a little bit later on playing around with some of the jigs and everything that he's got set up. It's, it's like, it's full on. But tell us about some of the machinery you've got in, in the workshop. Everything computer related, um, yeah, CNC press brakes, CNC router tables, 3D printers, 3D scanners, yeah. Yeah, you've got the whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> got a few toys. He's got a few toys. You do, you've done both a 200 series like twin turbo engine and the 79 series single turbo. What in your opinions, the better option for a backyard builder like myself? Like what, if, if, if money was no object, what would you do and then all things considered, what would you do? If money's no object, 200 series motor fits, beautiful, probably the better option, a lot more expensive, but probably a better vehicle in the end. Yeah. And it depends on your own skill set too. If you're a highly skilled person, 200 motor is probably better, it's a lot more involved. But if you want something, yeah, more budget friendly, simpler, 79 motors, the way to go. So. I've made the right choice making a 79 motor then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got a lot quicker, especially with a six week turnaround time. Yeah, yeah. yeah You're never yeah. gonna do a 200 motor. <laughs> I mean, like the electronics, like there's a, there was a bin I saw over there, a massive, there's two big bins over there that are just, it's just full of cut out wires. Like, tell us a little bit about the difference between the two, just from a wiring perspective. Yeah, the 200 has tenfold more wires you need to remove and sort out to get all the, yeah, push button start to function back to the 80. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And then can you pair up a, because obviously the 200s came out auto only, but can you pair up a manual gearbox to that or it has to run as an auto? You could pair up a manual gearbox behind it, but you're probably wasting sort of half the reason you would want to go the 200. Like, yeah. If you want a manual, you're probably better off sticking with the 79. 79. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So this one here, this 80 here, which is Jason's, this is Australia's first 200 series 80? Yeah. Yeah. The only one in the country to be done. Yeah. Yeah. And, and hence the, the number plate, VDJ 280. But you're building another one at the moment, which yeah. is going to have basically the same plates, but in New South Wales, is it? Yeah. With every box ticked, G yeah. turbos, big injectors, it's going to be a wild build, dual cab chopped. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's go and have a bit of a look at this thing. So obviously we're starting with the, the bonnet you know, the, it's got the, the DPF scoop, which is what I'm gonna be trying, attempting to do, to, to mold in. So um, you said you've done a couple with the single, like with the pre-DPF scoop and... Yeah, they don't look as nice. Not as much room under the bonnet. Yeah. yeah. So in the back, this is a pretty flash setup. Talk, talk, it's got you written all over it, so <laughs> talk us through it. Probably the less known side of what we do is, yeah, a lot of draw systems and fit outs, battery systems. Yeah, it's one of our yeah, all aluminum draw systems we built a little while ago for it. Um, 60 litre Ingle fridge. Oh, hitting away, you wouldn't even know it's in there. Except for the hum of it. Except for the hum of it. <laughs> it's loaded with the customer's gear at the moment. Yeah. We interrupted his holiday on the weekend. That's right, we said, yeah, come in and, and show us through it. Yeah, and then, yeah, a couple of storage drawers. Got an inverter tucked down the side of it. And there's a cargo barrier hidden in there somewhere. Yeah. And you got water tank or something in the back there? Yeah, something? there's a water yeah. tank in front of the drawers. Yeah. So this is a nice, you know, nice cutting board and everything like that, isn't it? Yeah. How can you get a hold of a set of these drawers? Like, um, we can build the exact same systems if you've seen them on our website. Oh, 
Instagram and Facebook before, or we can do custom setups. Yeah. Yeah. Just ring up and ring up and have a chat about what your needs are and and you're, you're starting to build a website or something at, at the moment. You're, you're looking yeah, at developing one, on yeah. so to be able to just sort of pick and choose, you know, your yeah. your options and that. Yeah. yeah, make it easy for people to purchase instead of yeah. And weight wise, because it's all alley, like how do you find that compared to say you know like the the king shit? Yeah, considerable weight saving and considerable room saving as well because you haven't got all the thickness of the plywood everywhere. You've only got yeah yeah thickness of alloy. And you cut it all on the on the CNC, uh, sorry, on the um, router, don't you? Yeah, all CAD design, CNC router cut, yeah. folded, yeah. That's all powder coated, cool. everything in-house. All done in-house? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's cool. So what's this one up here? Uh, we have a pantry up top. Yeah, right. As you can tell, it holds a lot of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool, isn't it? All right, so what I'm doing now is we're gonna cut out all the bends for the exhaust and we're gonna, he's made up a whole heap of jigs and everything like to go on the exhaust. So basically he's, <laughs> he's created all of these uh, 3D printed molds. So I can basically put in a bend, put it in the bandsaw and it cuts off at the right spots. And then when we go and put it up on the jig, it all just goes together. So I've, already cut two of these already and it's freaking cool so anyway let's put this one in and uh, cut it up so what do we got cut perfect and now the way that he's designed it is that obviously they join together so we've cut one there I'm now gonna flip it over right and then it cuts there at the perfect angle. As you can see, that's that one there is a good example. It's not even 90 degrees. It's probably like 95 or 97 degrees. Um, but at least now we're gonna get that right angle um, as long as we have that all matched up. Brilliant. So now he's obviously got a full um, bench with all the, you know, the little slots in there to be able to set up a jig. And so this, is a jig again he's made up out of um, 3d printed all, all the parts and everything like that um, so this obviously goes on the back of the turbo uh, goes through a flex joint I have a cat converter and now I'm just finishing off to be able to join up to the muffler so underneath the car this will come out from the passenger side you'll then uh, have the gearbox and everything like that and it basically goes over the back of the gearbox so um, yeah I'm pretty impressed with the, uh, the setup that he's got with um, not only these, like these were bloody awesome, um, but even this, this is making this so much easier because there's so much incre um, incre what's the word? Incre incre I can't even say it. There's so much, it's complex. Yeah, it's been good to be able to just help him sort of get this get together. So I've been pretty lucky to be able to sort of, um, I guess, work on my own stuff. Yeah, I mean, the system that he's got, um, you know, to be able to put these kits together for for other people is is phenomenal. So anyway, I'm going to um, keep going on this, get this all tacked up, and then yeah, on to the next bit. So the first thing is obviously the engine mount. So you would have seen as I was putting the engine in, I sort of bolted them up and then, then I could tack them in and, and then just weld them off nicely. So they're all in there now. And as you can see, there's not much room um, around, you know, between the strut towers and everything like that, you know, so especially on this side. So the problem is if you, if you look, I actually have to put that steering shaft down here so i'm probably gonna have to drop that steering shaft out in order to drop the cab down um, the other part as well is 
the notch in the chassis. So yeah, obviously I had to cut out a section of that because that's where the turbo sits uh, on the 79 series. So this is this is Hagen's method, so off-track concepts method of being able to get away with it without putting a body lift into it. Now, a couple of things have to happen in order for that to pass engineering. So we've obviously taken out you know, that strip of metal, we've got to put that back in somewhere. So what I've got is I've actually got some bracing that I've got to weld under here. So it's just basically that same sort of um, steel, weld that under there to bring that bracing back to that part of the chassis. So that's one part. And then the other part as well, are the turbo lines come through here, sorry, the, um, the intake uh, line comes through here. Now the factory, the factory brace for the strut tower here, it fouls on that. So again, what we've had to do, I've had to cut all that out and then rebrace that strut tower. So what we've taken out, we've put back in, but just in a slightly different spot. So that's, again, that's all the little bits and pieces of work that you don't normally see. You think, oh yeah, I'm just gonna get a set of engine mounts, but there's a lot of, not only a lot of work on my part to get them installed, but there's a lot of work on Hagen's part to be able to think about all these different bits and pieces. All right, so yeah, it's, um, that's pretty cool. Well, that's, that's a bit of progress, I guess. Engine's mounted and um, and the cab's back on, so I can check out all the tolerances and everything like that. But I think I'm gonna end the episode there because uh, the wiring now is, is real. I'm scratching my head. So I'm basically, um, yeah, I've been pulling a lot of stuff out the last sort of, you know, half an hour or so, probably an hour. Um, but I think I'm just, it's probably not much to record of any use. So I think I'll end the episode there. Pick it back up again next week. Uh, it'll be what we'll be up to then. Yeah, obviously I want to get the wiring sorted out. I'll have the last bits and pieces from off track concepts by then. So the airbox and stuff like that. But basically now it's just starting to fit everything up in the engine bay and everything like that now. So yeah. Anyway, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel um, to keep up to date with what's going on with the build. And make sure you leave a comment as well below. If you're enjoying the build, uh, if I'm missing anything, make sure you please let me know because I've had a few people actually message me and it's been, it's been good that way. But yeah, in the meantime, uh, enjoy and we'll catch you next time.